This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. This is a diagram of a Hyper-V cluster that we're actually going to build. And in our cluster, we're going to use technologies like teaming, trunking, VLANs, and multipath I.O. to increase the possibility of uptime by eliminating even more single points of failure. Now, as far as the concepts of teaming, trunking, and VLANs go, we went over those in the Windows Server 2016 Hyper-V Training Intermediate to Advanced on ITDVDs.com. And, of course, as a member, you have access to that training and that's a prerequisite to this training. So we're not going to go over those concepts, but we are going to show exactly how to implement them. So we've already discussed the different types of traffic. We're going to create a public subnet, an iSCSI subnet, a heartbeat for our cluster communications, a heartbeat network, and a live migration network. And these are going to be different VLANs and run on different subnets. And our two nodes are going to be Hyper-V01 and Hyper-V02, and we're actually going to add a third node later on. And the goal for our cluster is to have our nodes configured the same. If we can do that, it really helps out if we're having problems or when we're migrating one virtual machine to another from one host to another host. So in our cluster, Hyper-V02 and Hyper-V01 are going to be built the same. It's just they'll have different IP addresses. So let's take a closer look at how just one of our Hyper-V hosts is set up. And again, the other Hyper-V host is set up exactly the same way. It's just when we IP address it, it's going to be a little bit different. So here's one of our hosts, Hyper-V01. It's going to have four physical NICs. Now, there are a number of different types of configurations, and it kind of depends on how much bandwidth you need, how many virtual machines you're going to have, and how much those virtual machines communicate outside of the host. And these NICs could be 10 gig NICs. They could be gigabit NICs. Again, that all depends on the resources you have available to you and how much bandwidth you need. If we have 10 gig NICs, a lot of times we'll just need two physical NICs. So for example, physical NIC 2 and physical, physical NIC 3. And that will provide enough bandwidth. But again, we're going to have four physical NICs in our environment. And this is the physical view right now. So we're looking at this server physically. I've got an Ethernet cable going from one NIC to the host to one of my physical switches. The port on the switch is going to be configured as a trunk port. And then another physical NIC going to that same switch. Again, it's configured as a trunk port on the switch. And then we have another physical NIC going to another switch. All the switch ports here are going to be configured as trunk ports that the Hyper-V host is connected to. And again, another physical NIC connected to that other physical switch. What this does by connecting it to multiple phys physical switches, it gives us switch redundancy. So if this switch goes down, then our virtual machines and our host can communicate through these two physical NICs outside this switch. So in that case, our host doesn't go down as well. So remember, the goal is to eliminate single points of failure. And with our storage, we're going to be using an iSCSI SAN. We're going to be using teaming on our iSCSI SAN. So we're going to have one NIC connected to one switch and another NIC connected to another switch. And of course, we're going to have our domain controllers on our network as well. So this was the physical view, meaning how the cables are actually wired in our data center. Let's look at the logical view. So here we are in our logical view, and we're going to have four physical NICs, just like we had in our physical view, but we're going to team them, which will create one logical network adapter called, we're going to call it HV-Team. And then we're going to create that logical network adapter that's going to show up as a Microsoft multiplex driver, as we'll see. And we're going to create a virtual switch and connect that teamed adapter to our virtual switch. In our virtual switch, we're going to create five virtual network adapters. And you can see the physical network adapters we're calling PNIC. So P stands for physical. The virtual network adapters are going to be started with the V, so VNIC. This will help us because it does get a little bit confusing, especially when we're working with it uh, through PowerShell. So we're going to create one virtual network adapter for our management traffic. It's going to run on VLAN 6. Two virtual network adapters for our iSCSI traffic. That's going to run on VLAN 10. One virtual network adapter here for our heartbeat or our cluster communications. That's going to run on VLAN 20. And another one for our live migration traffic. That's going to run on VLAN 30. Now when we create these virtual network adapters, we're also going to use something called quality of service to ensure that each type of traffic has enough bandwidth, or at least ensure that one type of traffic 
won't use up so much bandwidth that it hinders another type of traffic. And that's what allows us to use this configuration. Because without that quality of service, for example, if we're live migrating a bunch of, bunch of virtual machines, it might use up all the bandwidth in order to do that and therefore choke out the management network or maybe the iSCSI network or the cluster communications network, and that can cause a lot of problems. So back in the old days, it was better off to separate these different type of traffics onto physical network adapters so that, again, one type of traffic wouldn't bother another type of traffic. But this quality of service makes it possible so that we can team all of our NICs together, and that actually does increase our overall throughput because before we would actually waste a lot of bandwidth because we might put the management network on two teamed network adapters well normally the management network doesn't use up much bandwidth at all so we're wasting probably a, a network adapter and a half at least worth of bandwidth when it could be used for something else like live migration or our virtual machine traffic and you may actually be looking at this diagram and being wondering you know how does our virtual machine traffic communicate out well, the virtual machines will be connected to this virtual switch, and we're going to configure the virtual NIC on the virtual machine with a certain VLAN. And that will allow it to communicate out on our network, and it'll be using up the bandwidth of our HV team. And we can also configure each network adapter in each virtual machine with quality of a service to make sure that it has enough bandwidth as well. And here's a closer look at Hyper-V02, and it's configured, again, the exactly the same way. It's just going to have different IP addresses. And the nice thing about this setup is, as far as redundancy is concerned, if one of these physical NICs goes down, then all three of these other NICs are still functioning and working. So we have not only load balancing across all of these NICs, but we have failover. So, again, if any one of these NICs goes down, the other three are still working and functioning and handling all the different types of traffic. So it's not like one type of traffic is tied to one physical NIC. And if, even if we had two NICs fail, then all the traffic would go over the remaining two NICs that were still up. Also, if we did end up needing more bandwidth, we could very easily add another NIC and add that NIC to the team, and that would give us additional bandwidth from that NIC. Now when we're trying to figure out how much bandwidth we're going to need, so basically how many NICs are we going to need, uh, one sometimes forgotten bandwidth uh, chewer upper is how are we going to back up these virtual machines? Most of the time it's going to be over the network, and how often are we going to back up these virtual machines? So that can definitely utilize a lot of bandwidth. So if we're working with gigabit NICs and all of a sudden we get up to you know, six or eight or even more gigabit NICs in our team, we probably want to start looking at 10 gig Ethernet at least because each host will use up a lot of physical switch ports on our switch. Normally, the NICs are not that expensive, but the switches are pretty expensive. So instead of using eight gigabit NICs, we might be better off getting a 10 gig switch and using two 10 gig Ethernet adapters. And in that case, our configuration is the same. It's just instead of four NICs in our team here, we'll have two NICs in our team. 